Okay, so we are going to start talking about how to implement uh, the binary search tree. So we'll start with the simple init and the first operation, which is insertion. So very simply, we're going to call the class binary search tree, and we're going to put this in the file called bst.py, and it's in the same place as the uh, binary tree node. So a um, couple things, uh, kind of housekeeping kind of work. We'll define a few exceptions that we'll use for this class. Um, but you know, when you're actually developing, I mean, when I was doing this, I added them as I, as I went, but I want to just get them out of the way. So remember, we don't allow any duplicate data um, in our version of binary search tree. So that's what this, this um, exception is for. And also we will, um, this one would be the more useful one is often if we're looking up a piece of data, we couldn't find it, we would um, uh, raise uh, the not found error. Uh, we can potentially use that standard key error exception. Doesn't matter. Um, this is what the reading did. So that's, I follow that. And also there are times that uh, we'll, we'll hit an empty tree and we want to know about that. So that's what that exception is about. I was thinking later that we probably can combine the two, but anyway, I had the two separate. All right, so that's the exception. Um, then the next thing we're going to do for the binary search tree is this, just the initializer. So um, remember, they're the most important um, attribute of a binary search tree is its root, right? Just like uh, in a linked list, it's the head. So when we first started, um, there's nothing in the tree, so very naturally the root would be none. It's also very useful to keep an attribute called a size, and you know that counts the number of nodes or data in the tree. And when as, uh, as when we first started, it's zero. Um, for the for the root, there's really no reason to expose the root to the client, so we're not going to uh, write a, a getter for the root, let alone a setter, right? But for the size, it would be useful uh, for the client code to know how big the tree is. So we'll define a, a property, which simply return the size. And um, if we add that, might as well support the uh, operation for done the length, which is getting the size of the binary search tree. And even with just a few lines of code, I think it's a good practice that we write a little bit of test. And so I have a separate file called the BST test cases, or TP BST test case. And I'm going to test the init. I'm just going to construct the init, uh, sorry, binary search tree, an empty one. I'll make sure the root is none. I'll make sure the size is zero and or the length is zero. So let me run that. And uh, OK, good. Uh, it's, it's something simple, but um, but uh, it's good that it's there um, so that future uh, maintainer of this code base, you know, they don't inadvertently change something uh, about the tree, about the initial condition of the tree without being caught. So very naturally, the first thing we want to do with any sort of data structure is probably well, after the initializer is to, to put something into the data structure, right? So we will implement the insert method. Um, now, what the insert method, the signature is going to be just, you know, given a piece of data we want to insert into the tree. Now, the kind of operation we want to do, very just kind of a high level, intuitive level, what we want to do is, well, uh, remember, it uh, the binary tree, you know, things has to be, we have to stick to the invariant. Anything on the left is smaller, anything on the right is bigger. So given a piece of data, let's say 56 here, uh, we see 23, we should not put it on the left side, right? We should go down on the right side. So we keep going, we go down on the right side, we had 42. Well, uh, 56 is still bigger than 42, then we go down one more. Now we hit 79. Um, 79 is or 56 is smaller than 79, so we can we should go down on the left tree. Now, 79 does not have a um, left child, so great. We find a place. This would be the place where we want to put in 56, right? 
So that's that's kind of what we we do. And at at the end here, we should kind of just put fifty six in a node and then attach um, the node that can the new node that contains fifty six to as a left child of the node that contains seventy nine. Okay, so the public version of insert, as we say, we should insert given a piece of data. Now, there is a little problem because this public version only has data as a parameter. And if that's the case, then, uh, and, and there's a good reason that that's the case because we, again, we don't want the client know to know about the root, right? Now that's a problem because uh, how do we do recursion on this thing? How do we, you know, repeatedly walk down the tree to to find the right uh, node to right place to insert? So basically, we really need um, uh, this insert operation to have a have a node so that um, we can recursively walk down the tree. So that's why we write a private recursive version of the public insert and for this private recursive version now we have the the, the root of the subtree okay and for in particular for insertion uh, it's very important to remember this that um, this private recursive version of insert is to return a subtree okay it can be the the existing subtree or a new subtree doesn't matter either way it will have to return a subtree with the new data inserted at the appropriate place. And we'll see how we do that. So the first thing we do is, okay, um, what if the subtree is empty? Well, that's the, that's the easy case, that's the base case. So if the subtree root is uh, none, if subtree root is none, then we very easily, well, remember we're creating a new node, so we should uh, in increment the size. And we don't have a setter for this, so we have to use the private attribute. And why is this still red? Subtree node, oh, subtree root node. Okay, um, and then we can just create a new binary tree node that wraps the data data and just return it so that's that that's that's the base case uh, there's another kind of sort of base case now if the subtree node is there but if the subtree node data is the same as the data that we're inserting then uh, remember we don't allow Duplicate data, so we'll just raise uh, binary search tree um, duplicate data. Duplicate data error. We'll just say um, data exists already already exists something like that. Okay. Um, so that's the simple kind of uh, base case, and let me make sure I've gone through everything that I would like to go through. Yes, I did. And then the next step is to think about the recursive case. Okay, so recursive case, uh, we should know that so L, if, if the data is smaller than the subtree node data, um, then we should, what should we do? We should insert it on the left hand side, right? So we should do self, the private insert. Uh, now we should insert on the left side, so subtree node left hand side, the same piece of data. Now uh, it's important to realize this that um, again that the the underscore insert it's going to return a subtree that contains the data. That subtree, I mean, currently, that subtree may be completely empty, in which case, you know, the new uh, a node is created and that node is returned. And in, if that were the case, then we have to assign it to the left child. Okay. 
and 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 if it's if it's not if it's just the existing left child so it doesn't hurt to assign the existing left child to the existing left child so that's how we do it okay and lastly otherwise we 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 know it's not equal we know it's not less than then it's bigger than than else it's well we don't have to we don't have to check condition then we do the same thing for the right side. So that would be self insert. Uh, the subtree node right child data. All right. And now I actually remember why this is not happy. I usually call this the subtree root, not the subtree node. Okay, there we go. All subtree root. All right, so let me make sure I talk about everything that's here. And yes, similarly, and that. And so just one more thing we have to do here, because remember, underscore insert must return the subtree, whether the subtree has been modified, modified or not. So at the end, we'll just return the subtree root. Okay. So that's this one. All right. So how do we use the question is uh, now that we complete the private uh, recursive version of insert, then how do we use it in the public version? All right. So and that should be fairly straightforward. We can just do uh, obviously a can when we insert especially the very first time when a tree is empty uh, we can potentially modify the root right so the root would be equal to that insert where do we start we start at the root and we want to insert the data okay and again um, this is necessary. This assignment is necessary for the very first time when the root was still pointing to nothing and a new node is created. It does not matter for the rest of the cases where there is already a root, but it again doesn't hurt to assign root back to root. So now that we actually implement the insertion, we really should test it. So let's actually for the very first thing that we insert, let's insert the number 23 and we check a few things. So I already typed this up. Um, so we insert 23. We know the data at the root should be 23. And we know the roots, left child and right child should both be none. And finally, we know now the BSD, the size should be one. So let's actually run that and make sure that is the case. And yes, it is. That's great. Uh, we can do a little more, right? We can insert another uh, number, let's say 8. So 8 should go to the left side, left subtree of 23. So after we do that, we should check, you know, um, the, the root is still 23 and the left child of the root is 8 and the right child should stay at none we haven't inserted anything else and now the size should be two and let's run that again that's good so uh we've implemented insert we've done a couple of tests it's probably your turn to, to to write something um before we do that i just want to say make this comment that um there are really uh multiple ways to do insert and actually the way that i that was presented here was not the way that I, I came up with myself. This was from the reading, and but I, I used the one from the reading because um, it is one of the um, cleanest and simplest approach that I've seen. Although um, uh, the, the assigning the subtree back to the subtree, that um, particular approach might be less intuitive to some of you. So anyway, um, what I would like you to do here, if you don't completely understand how the insertion code works, particularly if you don't, um, that you really should trace through the code and uh, either by hand or step through it in a debugger and make sure you understand how at least these first two nodes are created and connected in the tree. And um, you'll probably want to do uh, more if you have time. And once you have done that, 
uh, it would be useful if you um, insert, say, another number, say 42, um, draw the picture so that uh, you know what the uh, BST should look like, and then write the test to make sure that the tree structure is what you expected. All right, so this is the picture I draw with 42, and this is kind of the code that I wrote. And um, if, you, if, uh, if you really want to get a hang of it, try one more, insert the number four. Again, draw the picture and write the test to make sure that the tree structure is correct. And here is the tree structure in the test code that I wrote. I'll show you here in the editor, and I can run it, and hopefully it Yes, it all works.